Tonight on News Center, take a tour of the rededicated El Monitali Student Center, find out what to watch on television, and see if the Vulcans can rebound from a loss to Bloomsburg. All these stories and more next on News Center. Good evening and welcome to CU TV News Center for the week of September 17th, 2015. I'm Zach Prosba. And I'm Jennifer Germano. After two and a half years of construction throughout the Natali Student Center, the official rededication ceremony for the building was held this Wednesday in the new Heritage Lounge, where many members important to the project were able to speak. Higher education is a competitive process, and that's what we're doing now. We're staying competitive. Uh, California is moving forward. Uh, there's a great team in place to do that, and this is an exciting day for this rededication. We felt an important relationship to this project because we were the architects for the 92 expansion of the Natali Center, as well as some of the early development programming studies that were done for the current project. And we were the architects for all of the surrounding student housing in this particular important campus neighborhood. Those of us involved in student affairs are very proud of this incredible facility because it provides much needed space for our well-deserving students. This facility is a great testament to the many individuals, from architects to contractors to our own employees, and most importantly, our most deserving students. This is our student center, so I ask that you treat it that way. Make yourself at home, be respectful to the people around you, and be proud of our building. This facility has been through a number of transformations over the years but it has always played a central role on our campus life. It is a hub for educational, cultural, and social activities that complement the academic experience for our Cal U students. After the rededication ceremony in Natali, guests were invited to take a tour of the newly renovated space. If you have not yet been able to look over the new locale, CUTV's own Nikki Bragnano takes a look around space both new and old with new features. As you can see behind me, the construction cranes are no longer on the Student Center. After two and a half years, the construction has came to a completion and has opened up the new Student Center for the year of 2015. Follow us and let's take a look inside. The main attraction of the newly renovated Natalie Student Center is the Heritage Lounge. This renovation included 60,000 square feet of renovation as well as 40,000 square feet of new additional space to the Elmo Natalie Student Center. This brings so much more space for students to enjoy and creates a larger atmosphere that fills the entire dome with a studious and event-filled location. The stairway that goes above the Heritage Lounge leads right into the food cart. V-Bar offers different types of cuisines each week. The Fire Girl offers burgers, chicken fingers, french fries, and other American favorites. Fresh serves salad and variety of wraps. All of these orders are displayed on the information board, which is connected to the ordering stations, where students can make unique selections for their meals. Located on the left-hand corner of the food court is Vulcan Express, featuring sushi that is made fresh every day and is accompanied by other tasty snacks and prepackaged meals. The new Gold Rush Culinary Center consists of seven stations with a wide variety of selection of foods, starting from meat and potatoes, sandwiches, stir-fry, pasta and pizza, all the way down to the homemade gelato. The Flats Convenience Store was expanded three times larger than before. New glass windows allow students to watch as their food is made, along with a new wood smoked oven for pizza and barbecue dishes, and a tortilla machine for quesadillas that make a nice, fresh addition to every meal. Aside from the new food attractions, multiple pool tables in room 109 create another option for students to hang around and unwind throughout the day. Additional outlets for students have been added for technology devices, so people can charge up their phones while hanging with friends or having a meal. The new commuter center is a location designated for commuting students, which has new lockers for personal belongings and snack machines in between classes. The expansion of the student center creates more office space for university centers and programs, such as the Office of Student Affairs, the Women's Center, Campus Ministries, and the Career and Professional Development Center. Thank you for joining us with the tours of the new student center. I'm Nikki Brognano with CUTV News Center. This morning, President Geraldine Jones held her annual student convocation in the convocation center. During the forum, President Jones discussed student enrollment, the purchase of dormitories from SAI, campus security, as well as campus technology and UTech services. If you are not able to attend, the event is held every semester and will return in the spring. 
Later this semester, President Jones will also hold her popular event, Campus Talk, where students are able to ask questions to the president in an open forum. As part of the annual events held at the beginning of the fall semester, the 28th Annual Health Fair was held in the Convocation Center this past Wednesday. Many vendors were represented at the event, including the Coast Guard, General Mills, the Cal U Women's Center, and many more. If you missed the exciting festivities, you can learn more on how to better your health by visiting the health center located in Carter Hall. Every year, Cal U has plenty of discussion panels on campus discussing various subjects. This past Monday, Cal U held a panel on tattoos and society in Eberly Hall in front of students, faculty, and the public. During the panel, an artist described his own tattoos, his clientele, and how it has changed over the years, and even gave a little demonstration of a tattoo in front of the audience. If you would like more information that goes beyond the panel, email Dr. Emily Schweitzer, Director of Cal U's Sociology Deviance Program at schweitzer at calu.edu. During the spring semester last school year, I was able to announce changes coming to the Uniontown Shopping District, a short 20-minute drive from Cal U's campus. Updating the progress, the new shopping plaza with Hobby Lobby and Dick's Sporting Goods is now open and has been running for about a month now. The Five Guys being added to Uniontown is about a month or so away from being completed, with signage already adorning the building. The new Sheets building is also nearly complete, with the actual gas pumps to be added soon. When the new Sheets is open across from the street from the current location, Chili's will be opening a new location in the former Sheets lot. Be sure to stay tuned to CU TV for further updates. To find out the latest news on campus and elsewhere, make sure you pick up a copy of the Cal Times that was released every Friday around campus. To preview what is coming up in this week's edition, we sat down with Jose Negron, Editor-in-Chief of the Cal Times. Hey Cal U, this is Jose Negron from the Cal Times. We have a lot in store for you in our publication this week in news. Uh, we had our rededication ceremony of the Natalia Student Center on Wednesday. We have full coverage of that as well as a photo spread. In opinion, our news editor Stetson Province tackles the war on Islam and in sports, our sports editor Matt Hagee features Men's soccer forward Jesse Shire as our Athlete of the Week. Be sure to pick up a copy of the Cal Times around campus and also check us out at caltimes.org. So Jen, you previously mentioned about the, all the new things that are coming to Uniontown. Men, uh, also mentioned it's a short drive from campus. It's really one of the big mm -hmm. areas students to go out and you know, shop and dine. And I'm really excited about some of the new restaurants coming, especially Five Guys. Uh, you know, back home in Georgia, there's a lot of them around. Not up here, so it's good to be getting some form of home cooking, I guess, up here in Pennsylvania. It does remind me of home a lot, Zach. It's really reminiscent. And I'm most looking forward to, I think, the Hobby Lobby and the Dick's Sporting Goods because I love going to get new tennis shoes, new um, shorts for yoga, anything like that. And for Hobby Lobby, I just love crafting. So that's going to be a great new store that I can go to, and I know they have great deals because we have them at home, too. So, yeah. Now, I'm not much into yoga and yoga shorts and stuff like that, but I can definitely grab my Pirates and Steelers gear there, too, so that'll be good. Well, coming up after the break, Damon Madsen has your weather forecast. Stay tuned. Don't miss your chance to catch the best pro wrestling on the planet. Ring of Honor returns to the Pittsburgh area at the Convo Center at Cal U, Friday, September 25th at 7.30 p.m. with appearances by the Briscoes, Jay Lethal, Adam Cole, and many more. Experience body slamming, super kicking pro wrestling action live. Visit ROHwrestling.com now for tickets and info. The time is now, the place is here. Stop running, face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot, can't afford to miss. The time is now, the place is here. Stop running, face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot, can't afford to miss. So let's get it, let's go. Go hard and go home. Welcome back, and now we welcome in Damon Madsen for your weather forecast for this upcoming five days or so. Damon, take it away. 
Yeah, guys, we saw that cold weather last weekend during the Cal football game, but slowly we've seen it warm right back up. And this weekend, we're going to see that trend continue. We're going to see highs in the high 80s to close to 90 degrees here tomorrow and on into Saturday. But as you can see later on into Sunday and the beginning of the week on Monday, temperatures are going to cool back down into the low to mid 70s. And there may be a slight chance of rain Monday night into Tuesday. But otherwise, I think we're going to keep that dry weather and relatively keep the warm temperatures around. Yeah, and David, my, my question for you is because for those of you at home, you don't notice we're both dealing with colds here, and I think it's because of the sporadic weather. Are we going to finally break away from where it's hot, then cold, then hot again, or is that going to continue on for the next few weeks? I think this may be one of the last warm-ups we might see getting into mid-September and then on into later in the month. Usually you start to see those temperatures steadily decline and stay in the 60s and 70s, so I'm hoping that this is one of the last times we see such a drastic change within a week's time. Personally, for me, that's a little bit of a disappointment because I do love the warm weather, don't get me wrong, but I hate being sick. So if we can just you know, steady it out yeah. to one type of temperature, that's good with me. I think everybody's going to be happy when we see those colds go away when everything kind of levels out as far as temperatures are concerned. Thanks, Damon. And when we come back, Ryan Kaufman takes over the entertainment report. Stay tuned. Catch all the excitement under the Friday Night Lights with CU TV's High School Football Game of the Week. You have the best seats in the house as the area's longest running high school football telecast, now in its 29th season, brings you the area's biggest games. Don't forget to watch the replay on CU TV, Sundays at 8 and Thursdays at 5.30. Since 1937, the Student Association Incorporated, known as SAI, has served the Cal U student body by providing activities, programs, and services. Every enrolled student has the ability to take part in over 125 different clubs and organizations. Managing participation in every SAI activity is easy with OrgSync, a powerful tool for staying connected. Located one mile from campus, the SAI farm has 94 acres of meeting and recreational space. SAI, it's your student association. Welcome back to CU TV News Center. I'm Ryan Kaufman. Each week of the year, viral videos go viral and crazy new inventions are put on the market. But how would you ever know about them? Where do you find these things? Never fear, Mike Mays is back with his finds from the World Wide Web. Hi, my name is Mike Mays. My friends consider me an expert on finding strange and little weird things online. So here are three things I found online this week. A number of homeowners have been finding snakes hiding in their toilets. One man found a python that was seven and a half feet long. Batman or Superman, you decide, at the new DC comic Superhero Cafe. Located in Singapore, the Heroes Cafe promises a brand new experience with custom dishes like the Dark Knight Burger. The Heroes Cafe is a great place to go. Stormtroopers have been trained in the dark side of the force. These bizarre and entertaining pictures show the stormtroopers' lighter side. The financial troubles of being a student can cause some great creativity. From warming up a pizza to fixing a broken shower head, students here are sharing clever solutions on fixing their problems. So there you have it, my three things I found online for this week. If you guys find anything, let us know. For CUTV News Center, I'm Mike Mays. We have a new segment showcasing great new entertainment in film and television. Wesley White from CUTV News Center is here to give you a taste of the new Netflix original show, Narcos. There's a lot going on in the world of entertainment today. Here to guide you through the process, Wesley White here from CUTV showing you my pick of the week. Netflix recently released their latest Netflix original TV series, Narcos. Season 1 went live and is becoming one of the most popular shows on Netflix and one of the best shows I have personally ever watched. Narcos primarily takes place in the South American country of Colombia during the 70s and 80s, and it showcases the rise of Pablo Escobar, a real-life drug kingpin and criminal mastermind. The show dives into details of how Escobar goes from nothing to becoming the most feared gangster in the modern world, who at his peak provided 80% of the cocaine smuggled into the United States. 
The show feels like a documentary with life to it. It seamlessly blends the storyline of the show with real footage of events perspiring during this time period in Colombia. Without this effect, the show still stands strong, but it gives it an edge like no other show I have ever seen before. As you watch, you will root for the DEA to crack down and capture him, but secretly yourself want to see how far Pablo Escobar can go. This new widely popular show was renewed for a second season within a week of release. Make sure to check out Narcos on Netflix. For CUTV News Center, this is Wesley White. Disney has once again spun the remake wheel, and this time it has landed on Mary Poppins. Disney is staying quiet on the casting role for Mary, but rumors have been spreading fast. Names such as Anne Hathaway, Kate Winslet, and Carrie Mulligan have all been tossed around the rumor mill in the last week. So far, we can expect about three big differences in this remake. The first is that the time period will be 20 years after the original movie. The second, we will see a darker side of Mary Poppins, apparently. And the third is that the, Brank, the bank's children will be young adults and could even have children of their own in this. Every once in a while, a political figure or a celebrity will say or do something that makes you stop and think to yourself, did I just hear that correctly? As the new entertainment anchor, I've discovered it is my job to bring these, shall we say, bizarre actions to light. Let's begin with the much-anticipated mudslinging and five-hour marathon that was the CNN Republican presidential debate last night. All in all, there were four candidates that stood out the most, but two that have the most spunk. Donald Trump and Lindsey Graham. Lindsey was in the first of the two debates last night and was quite sparky. We found out a lot about Mr. Graham last night, and here are a few examples. It was the most, he'd, it was the most time he'd ever spent in a library. He said it was uh, the first thing he's going to do as president is we are going to drink more. And also that if you aren't willing to have four kids after you turn 65, then we need to come up with a new, illegal, or new legal immigration system. So we know where his domestic policies will fall. But how about Mr. Trump? His tactics were once again very Trumpy. But he didn't do that well. Other candidates were ready to silence Trump, but he was almost like a fly that wouldn't go away. His tactics were mudslinging and takedowns that really didn't work because they were ready for him. Taylor Corn Swift has her face etched into a Maryland 12-acre cornfield. The reason? It is a giant corn maze, and the owner of the farm says he chose her image because she is a role model and inspires fans to be unique. The maze will be open to the public on September 26th and will close November 1st. Howard Stern is leaving America's Got Talent after four years on the judging panel. Howard made the announcement last night live on air before the, winning, before the winner was crowned. No word yet from NBC on his replacement. The famous and riveting BBC series Doctor Who returns to TV this Saturday night after a long-awaited off-season. But the latest big news isn't so much the show's return, but rather Jenna Louise Coleman, better known as Clara Oswald. She has quit the show. Uh, she has taken another role uh, as Queen Elizabeth. It is rumored that she will be leaving in a fantastic Christmas storyline after her lengthy 18 months in her role. Family Day 2015 is this Saturday on campus at, and at the football stadium. The annual event kicks off at 10 a.m. and culminates at the football stadium where the Vulcans will take on Shippensburg. Also, families can stop by the information desk in Natali to pick up free TNA Pro Wrestling tickets while they last. And to round out the entertainment report for this week, we have Mad Max Fury Road in the Vulcan Theater. An apocalyptic story set in the future and the furthest reaches of our planet in a stark desert landscape where humanity is broken and almost everyone is crazed fighting for the necessities of life. Within this world, world exists two rebels on the run who just might be able to restore order. There's Max, a man of action and a man of few words who seeks, to, uh, who seeks peace of mind following the loss of his wife and child in the aftermath of the chaos. And Furiso, a woman of action and a woman who believes her path to survival may be achieved if she could uh, make it across the desert back to her childhood homeland. And guys, very exciting announcement coming uh, to CU TV. We have a brand new show. Um, it's kind of like my brainchild there. It's called After Hours, and we're filming our first show next Wednesday night. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Uh, the basic premise of it is it's going to be CU TV's own kind of late night show. You think exactly. along Jimmy Fallon, you know, Stephen Colbert just <coughs> taken over. Maybe not as crass and dirty as some of those shows can be. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun and excitement games and such like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. I'm excited to see what 
all the different crazy challenges and topics are going to be picked up for each night because they're going to be different each night. Right. So I'm excited to see what all of them are going to be and see what everyone at the station can come up with for each night. And you have a good point. Everyone on the station, there is literally going to be everyone that's on the crew is helping out with this. So it'll be really fun. As they say, many hands make light work. So hopefully we can get this going. It'll be a great project. Hopefully. All right. Thanks, Ryan. And when we return, Matt Hagee has your sports report. Stay tuned. Watch CU TV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs, coverage of the biggest events on campus, and cheer on your Vulcan sports teams. CU TV, log on, tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. The time is now, the place is here. Stop running, face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot, can't afford to miss. The time is now, the place is here. Stop running, face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot, can't afford to miss. So let's get it, let's go. Go hard and go home. Save preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm Matt Hagee with your sports report. The California Vulcans football team welcomed the two-time defending PSAC East champion Bloomsburg Huskies to Adamson Stadium last Saturday. These contests normally come down to wire in the past, and that was once again the case. Let's go to the highlights, and we'll start right away here. Adamson oh, Stadium, first quarter, James well. Harris trying goes to lead for to a touchdown, goes to the end zone, intercepted and by Donovan Morris, the leader of the Bloomsburg oh, Huskies goodness. defense. A, he stole it right away from Gary Brown. However, the Vulcans were still very strong in the first half. You see John Franklin kicks off the scoring with his second touchdown in two weeks. He's got off to a nice start for the season. 7-0 Vulcans in the first half, and then it's added right here. William Man, Brazil, the Vulcans' new place kicker, makes a 10-0 in the Good. second quarter. Brazil the first half was all California Vulcans, Vulcans, both offense and, as you'll see right here, Kelly. defense. Jordan Lardani and Jawan Turner uh, strip the ball from quarterback Tim Kelly and is recovered by Errol Brewster, and it sets the Vulcans up very nicely here in their own territory. But instead of getting a touchdown, they attack on another field goal to make it 13 nothing. But still, despite the two field goals, those still all Vulcans. But then right here, the tide begins to turn right before the second quarter ends. Lawrence Elliott Jr. scampers 53 yards down the sideline, and Aaron Terry saves a touchdown, and Bloomsburg is only held to a field goal, which seemed harmless, but as, it, as we could see later in the second half, that began to change things. Right here before the second half, James Harris, who's already thrown one interception, make that two interceptions right here in the midfield. Bloomsburg had a chance to, to add to their scoring, but with Tim Kelly was intercepted by Chaz Veal as time expired. Bloomsburg on their first drive uh, makes it a one-score game here, 13-6 to off their opening drive. And now California's opening drive in the, se in the second half ended in another James Harris interception, the third one of the day. A uh, uh, bad day for James Harris here, a rare three interception game, and Bloomsburg takes advantage of it. Tim Kelly punches it in from one yard out to tie the game at 13 late in the third quarter. Bloomsburg continued to pound the Vulcans with the run, sets up another long drive, but a break here for California. A missed 25-yard field goal kept the game tied at 13, but California could not take advantage, but Bloomsburg took advantage again here on fourth and one. Lawrence Elliott Jr., no one there, 24-yard touchdown to give Bloomsburg the lead, 20-13, to 13, late, two minutes left. California had one last chance. James, Har James Harris brought the Vulcans to the red zone. He looks to the end zone, looks for Luke Smorey, but overthrows him in the corner of the end zone. Bloomsburg comes away with the, a bounce-back win over the Vulcans, 20-13. to 13. 
The Vulcans have now lost the last four meetings to the Huskies. One of the biggest storylines from the game was Gary Brown being forced to leave the game in the second quarter and not returning to the contest after already compiling 63 yards receiving. Along, along with the touchdown, John Franklin had a career-high 77 yards rushing, and Chazville and Luke Rapchak each had a whopping 15 tackles to lead the Vulcans' defense. Cal looks to rebound on Family Day this Saturday as the Shippensburg Red Raiders travel to Adamson Stadium for a 1 p.m. contest that can also be seen live on calvulcans.com from CUTV's feed. Or if you cannot watch uh, the game live, it will be replayed on CUTV Monday at 6 and Tuesday at 4. Anytime the Vulcans square off against the Red Raiders, much offense should be expected from these two teams. If anything, the Vulcans are in the exact same spot they were at this time last season. Here's a preview of Saturday's contest. Four yards down the field. California Vulcans fell victim to the Bloomsburg Huskies yet again last Saturday, but there is no reason to panic. Cal started 1-1 one one last season, but then reeled off six straight wins. That streak started last season with a thumping of the Shippensburg Red Raiders on the road who come to Adamson Stadium this week. Here are three keys to a bounce-back Vulcans win this Saturday. One, limit the penalties. In the first two games, California has received 19 penalties on 208 yards, which is the second most in the PSAC. To beat the Red Raiders, the Vulcans need to simply cut down the penalties to avoid having big plays wiped out. Two, get James Harris in a rhythm early. Throwing early and often with quarterback James Harris will wipe out any bad memories from last week. Last season, Harris lit up the Red Raiders' defense for 439 yards, which two touchdowns. And finally, three, heavily used a run. Last week, John Franklin showed flashes of brilliance against the Huskies. Using Franklin and also backup Nate Goldsmith will help establish the run like last season, where Nick Grissom and Terrell Roberson combined for 223 yards and six touchdowns against the Red Raiders' defense. Expect a lot of offense again from these two squads, Last season, both offenses combined for over 1,000 yards of total offense. And the winner of this game will be propelled highly into divisional play starting next week. Now on to soccer. Both the Cal Vulcans men's and women's soccer teams traveled up to Slippery Rock on Tuesday for a pair of afternoon contests with their rival. The series with the, the Rock women have become a fierce one over the years, including classic playoff games. This game was no different as the Rock used a goal from Derek Demish with 34 minutes, seconds left to hand the Vulcans their first loss of the season. Megan Jace for Cal lost her shutout streak at 233 minutes, and Danielle Kearns had the Vulcans' lone goal that tied the game with six minutes left. As for the men, they too were also defeated by the Rock as they lost 3-1. Reigning co-PSAC Men's Soccer Player of the Week, Jesse Shire, started the scoring with his, first, his fourth goal in his, the last three games to give the Vulcans an early lead, but it was all rock from there as they scored two goals within three minutes and then took advantage of a Vulcans' own goal. Both teams travel across the state to play Westchester this Saturday afternoon. Now it's time for the Hagee Six. Here are three games from both college football and the NFL that I feel will be the top games to watch this week. We start with college and there is a big one in South Bend this week with the 14th ranked Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets will square off against the 9th ranked Notre Dame. Last week the Irish lost quarterback Malik Zaire for the season and now will have to deal with the high powered rushing attack that Georgia Tech brings. The Saturday night ABC game will feature the Stanford Cardinal against 6th ranked USC. Stanford rebounded from an upset loss in week one and now head to Los Angeles to face a Trojans team that they have had success with in the past on the road. Then the game of the week in the SEC. The Ole Miss Rebels traveled to Tuscaloosa to face the Alabama Crimson Tide, who are looking to avenge last season's upset loss to the Rebels. In the NFL, we will start with the Patriots and the Bills facing off at 1 o'clock. Coming off a win against the Colts, the Bills look to make a statement to the league against the defending Super Bowl champions. Then an enormous matchup at 425 with the Des Bryant-less Cowboys traveling to Philadelphia to face the Eagles, who look to rebound from Monday night. Finally, we close with a rematch of the NFC Championship game from January as the Seahawks go against the Packers at Lambeau Field. This Sunday night matchup figures to be a good one with the Seahawks looking to avoid starting 0-2. And guys, great matchups this week. I think we got better matchups than last week. What, what, what game are you looking forward to this week? 
I'm definitely looking forward to an NCAA. I'm looking to Georgia Tech and Notre Dame because I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and you know you always hear about UGA, and it's usually better for UGA than Georgia Tech. Well, this year Georgia Tech's better than UGA in my opinion, so I'm excited to see what they can do against Notre Dame this week. And, and for me, I'm going to look NFL. Uh, I love the college game, but the NFL is always the big matchup, and you have to look Seahawks Packers. And you know, we talked earlier on your radio show this week. I think the Packers are going to send the Seahawks to 0 and 2. That defense without Cam Chancellor is just not not the same. It's kind of just the Legion without the Legion of Boom now at this point. Good point. And let's just hope the Packers can, if need be, recover an onside kick. Yeah. Let's let's <laughs> hope. Let's, we can only hope for that. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. And that will do it for this week's edition of News Center. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel at CUTV News Center. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.